All right, so hello everyone. A warm welcome to those of you who are new to our monthly virtual office hour series. And for those of you who have attended previous sessions, welcome back. Today we will we'll be talking about getting the most out of Microsoft Outlook. Joining me today is Vanessa Jimenez, our customer success manager. She will be sharing some tips and tricks in Outlook desktop. And Kevin Mohall, our technical customer success manager. Kevin will show us some common features, functions, and configurations in the Outlook web client. Uh, my name is Phil Wynn, and I'll be your host today. I'm also going to share some best practices on calendar in, micro in the Microsoft Outlook desktop client. We have Akshay, who will be helping us as a moderator, so you'll see some activity from him in the chat room. Next slide, please. Uh, a few housekeeping items before we start. Please use the chat function, as we already have, to type in your questions and comments. We will collect your questions and answer them during the Q&A portion of this session. But as an icebreaker, which I think we already started doing, uh, but use the chat feature to say hello and write where you're attending this conversation from. And if you're so inclined, uh, you can state the weather. California. All right, we have we have a oh Patrick, our friend from Kansas. Good to see you. We're good to hear from you. Uh, Pat Hilliard, James. Wow, we uh, Kevin from Tulsa. All right, Lisa from Mo. All right. OK, um, well, welcome all. Uh, another thing is for closed, for closed captioning, please click on the ellipsis and then turn on live captioning. OK, and please note that this session is being recorded. Danita, as you mentioned, the recording and slides will be available shortly to everyone who registered for this event. Um, before we start this conversation, we're going to do a quick poll about which Outlook client you're currently using and this, this poll will be available in the chat box. The poll's optional, so don't feel like you have to answer. And then it's real time, so you can see the results right away. Okay, for me, I'm gonna say um, I use the desktop version and a little bit of the web version, so I'm gonna click both. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, desktop is getting a little more uh, votes now. Okay. Okay, great. So the good news is that you've come to the right place because we're gonna do a little more emphasis on the desktop version, just because it's a lot more uh, robust. Okay. Uh, a laptop, if you have, April, I'm going to show you. You can you can access either version on the laptop, but we're going to show you. Okay. Um, okay. Let's just go over today's agenda, but we will get to that question, uh, April. Um, let me see. Today's agenda is that we're going to do a quick team introduction, and then I'm going to show you just a few things about the differences between the Outlook Web and Desktop, and then Kevin will take you through Outlook Web, some common features, functions, and configurations, and then Vanessa and I will take you through the Outlook Desktop. She'll show you some tips and tricks from the email client, and I will show you, show you some best practices from the calendar client, and then we'll open up to uh, Q&A. Like I said, this is, your, this is for you and your questions, so we want to spend a lot of time uh, asking, answering your questions. Next slide, please. All right. Uh, it, this is actually our fourth session now. The first one we did uh, introduction uh, to your licenses, and then we did getting started. And then in October, we did security. And then we heard from you folks. You said you want to get to know our the Microsoft apps a little better. Um, so today we're doing Outlook. And then the next session we're going to have in January is going to be about Teams, which I think is going to be pretty critical. But after four sessions, uh, it dawned on me that we haven't done a formal introduction yet. So I want to start with Kevin Mohall, our technical customer success manager. 
as you can see from the picture, which is only taken a couple months ago, he looks completely drastically different. Uh, this is his new uh, 2022 look. Uh, in his spare time, he likes to hike and read science fiction and technology. Uh, fun fact, he has over 53 cousins on his father's side. Um, I, like I said, this this picture and this slide was made about four months ago, so that number may have increased since then. Uh, then we have Vanessa Jimenez, our customer success manager, who is a huge Disney fan. I don't know if anybody is, is a bigger Disney fan than Vanessa. Uh, she loves to bake and she loves to cook, and wherever she goes, she looks for the best pizza place in town. So. All you folks in Missouri, Kansas, New Jersey, um, Delaware, if Vanessa's ever in town, she might hit you for a, a pizza reference. And I'm Phil. I'm part of the customer success team. In my spare time, I like to play tennis. I like to travel and explore new foods. So when this pandemic is over, I look forward to picking up those hobbies again. Uh, fun fact for me is that I am stuck in the 80s. Uh, I'm stuck in the 80s, so as my team knows, I reference 80s movies, 80s songs, 80s TV shows, and I think I still dress like I'm from the 80s. So, <laughs> Kevin, next slide, please. Okay, let's just jump right into this. So what's the biggest difference between Outlook Web and Outlook desktop versions? Number one is the layout, as you can see here. Um, Comparing the layout of Outlook.com to Microsoft Outlook desktop application, the similarities and differences between the two uh, become very clear. When you click on the email in your Outlook.com account, you'll see the preview uh, to the right, which is the only option for the web. The same is the case for desktop version, except the desktop version has many more icons and features displayed in the top ribbon. OK, and just look at just look at the differences, right? Even on the even on the desktop version, which is the right, you can see the dark mode, right? And you can see the differences between the complexity and robustness of the desktop version. OK, next slide, please. All right, and then. And then quick and easy versus robust features. What I want to do is emphasize, emphasize, emphasize the ribbons here on the left is the. On the left is the ribbon of the web version, and it's very sh small, short, and simple, right? You, you have limited features here. And on the right, if you look at the ribbon, you can see all the features there. And that's the top portion of the image. And if you look at the bottom portion of the image, once you drill down into the features, you you have even more categories and features, right? Just to show you the complexity of the between the two. Next slide, Kevin, please. OK, uh, how do you decide whether to use Outlook Web or Outlook Desktop? The answer is it depends what's most important to you. Uh, is it important for you to have access to your email client from any computer from any location? Do you prefer having better integration with online services and apps? If that describes you, then you'll want to go with the online version of Outlook. Um, are you more interested in tightly integrated scheduling, task management, and organization of emails? Are you looking for a more robust set of rules you can use to automate the management of incoming emails? If this is you, then you'll want to invest in the desktop version of Outlook. Um, at the beginning, we asked you which version of Outlook you're currently using. With this tidbit of information, uh, which version is right for you? There's a poll in the chat if you want to share your thoughts. OK, I'm going to vote and I'm going to stick to to the desktop because. Uh, both OK. <laughs> OK. OK, uh, so it looks like we have a lot of desktop, but I didn't want to I don't want to dissuade you from the web version because it's actually very very handy and it's light it's mobile and it's basically on the go you can access it anytime anywhere as long as you have internet connection okay um next slide please kevin 
All right, so these are some of the things we're going to cover today. Kevin's going to kick us off, and he's going to take us to some uh, mail flow rules and some configuration in the in the web client because that's his preference. Okay, and then Vanessa and I will go through the desktop version. Vanessa will take you through some organization and productivity features, and I will take you through some some pretty cool items. Number one is the insights. This is the AI. The um, the AI portion of, of Outlook, and then I'm going to show you some best practices in the Outlook calendar. Okay. And <laughs> okay, with that, I'm going to hand it off to Kevin, who's going to kick us off with the web app. Thanks, Phil. I'm going to go ahead and switch up here uh, to sharing my desktop. It was mentioned by a couple of people that they were having an issue with viewing some of the slides, their PowerPoint um, live presentation. We will be sharing the deck as part of follow up as well. So apologies for any issues that you were experiencing. All right. So as Phil mentioned, I'm going to be covering Outlook for the web. Um, there was a couple of features that I wanted to touch on. Pretty simple, um, fun little configurations that you can uh, do within the client. Um, specifically, um, I'm going to touch on mail rules, blocking domains, customizing actions, Microsoft Editor, and then my favorite, Microsoft Boards. So at the home page, outlook.office.com, you'll log in, you'll click on the gearbox right here. You'll click on View All Outlook Settings. And we're going to go down here to rules. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new rule. I'm just going to call this a test rule. I'm going to go ahead and set a condition for this. So I'm going to call on this particular rule. I'm going to call subject includes. And I'm going to call it sales reports. This can, of course, be any common uh, text string that you see in messages. But for this case, I'm just going to give it a simple uh, low hanging fruit. And then I'm going to also add an additional. At. Say the sender go from. Uh, we'll include message body also includes. And then we'll include. Uh, So I'm going to go ahead and add an action. So that when a sales report. Subject body mail message comes in. Then I'm going to go ahead and move that to a folder. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the sales report folder that I have in my inbox. I'm going to uncheck stop processing more rules. The reason for that is that having conflicting mail rules. Um, they are having rules that follow under similar patterns as far as destination folders, keywords, and even senders. If you stop processing more rules, you can't concurrently run flow rules, so that could cause a potential issue. I'm going to go ahead and click run rule now. And then I'm going to click save. And you can see here that it's added um, the mail rule. The next item that I want to touch on is blocking domains. I think all of us get mail that somehow manages to sneak through Exchange Online Protection, which is the basic security feature in all Core 365 licenses. Maybe we used it as part of registration for something that we needed to attend professionally, and we just keep getting bombarded. Uh, no matter how many times we unsubscribe, we've all kind of been there. The cool thing is, and I like to do this um, a lot, attending a lot of webinars and seminars, is I like to actually block a domain as whole. So I'm going to go ahead in this case, and I'm going to add a domain. Now, there's a couple of different components to the domain. A top-level domain, like you see here in Facebook.com, is just Facebook.com. But you may get mail messages with something called a subdomain, which would be 
basically a name before the main domain that you know. In this case, an example would be, say, uh, something like email.facebook.com. So just so that you know, you have the flexibility to block a uh, main top level domain, but some type of subdomain messages could potentially go through. But for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, I want to block mail messages from um, from Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and click enter. And then I'm going to click save. The next up here is to customize actions. So this is kind of an interesting thing, and this speaks to the, some of the differences between default differences between the Outlook for desktop and then Outlook for the web. You can get Outlook for the web to look a lot like Outlook for desktop by doing some of these types of basic configurations. Where these plant themselves, these things like quick actions, message surface, and toolbars are in what's called a graphical user interface. So the cool thing about customized actions, for example, with quick actions, you saw earlier I made a mail flow rule that sent sales reports to a sales reports 2021 folder that I had created. Well, the cool thing here is that I can actually add that as a quick action button by hovering over to the checkbox here and then clicking on it. You can see here, this actually gives you in real time a preview of what the functionality looks like on the user interface. You can also make adjustments to things that you see in the message service, for example. But please note, in the case of the quick actions, you're limited to only four. That's all that space that's provided in that upper right part of that um, tile frame. So in this particular case with the message surface, um, the ones that I've liked to add um, are in part because of my interest of security. Um, I've added things like to mark an email as phishing. Say, for example, I get an email message in that's coming in from some crazy domain uh, that I know for a fact is not a legitimate email and it somehow managed to come through. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the tab that to mark that as phishing. It will send a report uh, as part of your log analytics uh, in Azure, as well as reports uh, within the security and compliance endpoints for your to notify administrators. The last part here is toolbars. Uh, again, this is something you can customize to kind of how you want to do things. One of the features in here that is kind of interesting um, is polls. Um, it's actually an extension of what we're doing in the Teams chat. So if you're big on getting interaction um, and uh, questionnaires and these types of things from um, vendors, from uh, even from colleagues, you could even go ahead and actually add the poll tab to run that application within the mail message itself. Once we're all done here, we're going to go ahead and click save. So the next item that I wanted to touch on is Microsoft Editor. Microsoft Editor is a very cool tool. Um, so you're familiar with probably things like uh, Grammarly, which is great. Um, you're familiar with, uh, and, and Vanessa will even show later, some things on how to uh, account for uh, grammatical errors. Um, I am not very good with emails um, as far as grammar. Anyone that's got a message from me will tell you that um, my spelling is suspect, um, so I am a big fan of this feature. In Compose and Reply, we're going to go down to Microsoft Editor Settings, and in the pop-up window, I can go ahead and toggle on uh, as many of these features as I want. This is not what it's going to look like by default. I've just enabled all these features because I would take advantage of these uh, on a regular basis. The cool thing here is in addition to spelling and grammar, it also uh, touches on uh, items from as far as sentence structure, right? Um, so I have a problem with um, going on like a tangents uh, sometimes. Um, so what I like to do is, is I've turned on things such as clarity, conciseness um, and formality so that when I start typing a message, um, it will start to highlight items 
where um, maybe I didn't need to add like certain articles, maybe the tense is incorrect. Um, so if you are kind of, if this is an important thing to you and how you communicate, I would highly recommend toggling all of those on. Another uh, thing that's definitely worth note in the Microsoft editor settings uh, are things that are added here on the bottom. These are relatively new. I think they entered general availability like a year or two ago, maybe two. Um, they are toggles for inclusiveness and sensitive geopolitical references. Um, inclusiveness and geopolitical references. Um, someone had mentioned earlier that they do uh, activities within uh, the Latin American communities. Um, there are things that when you are conveying with vendors, with donors, with internal, external partners, that you may want to be mindful of when you're having a conversation uh, with people from those regions. We're all dealing with um, very different things geopolitically. Uh, and I just think it's a good thing um, to uh, have enabled, uh, particularly when I'm working with colleagues from LATAM or from uh, TechSoup Europe. Once you've gone through there, and if you can of course get expanded definitions on what these are and then even additional functionalities, right? So inclusiveness, you can add things like age bias, cultural bias, uh, ethnic slurs, gender bias, etc. So you can really get really granular with Microsoft Editor. So that's part of the reason I'm a huge fan of this. After you've gone ahead and uh, performed these configurations, you can go ahead and click OK. And you are good to go with that. The last item that uh, I want to go over is my personal favorite. Um, I, I tend to think of Outlook actually more from the perspective of a calendar that just happens to have a male client in it and not vice versa. With that said, the cool thing um, about Microsoft Boards is it gives you the ability on a, a, a two-dimensional plane to go ahead and create um, basically a, uh, a dedicated planner page, if you will. Uh, you can see that I've gone ahead and I've already kind of got one preloaded here. Um, so where you would go to when you are on calendar, you'd see a slightly different interface. Um, you will find though, regardless, that there will be a tab in the in near the upper right that reads board. Uh, to go ahead and create a new board, you'll scroll down to board, you'll click over, and then you'll type new board. I'm not gonna go ahead and go through all of this uh, just for time's sake, but I'm gonna pull up one that uh, I've already gone ahead and started to work with. I attend a very large number of conferences and webinars in my role. Uh, so what I've gone ahead and done is I have uh, taken calendars for projects as well as calendars that specifically are dedicated for um, webinars and events. You have the ability to create dedicated calendars and Outlook for the web. This is specifically what I use to track all things that are surrounding these webinars. Webinars for Azure, Microsoft Security, etc. My calendar hosts all that. If I want to take notes, for example, as a result of an event that I attended of something I want to look further into, I can interact with all of these different cards here in a variety of different ways. I, I think that by far this is probably one of my favorite items because it gives you that granular look at just one particular function or activity that you do as a professional. Now, as I mentioned, this is on a 2D plane. The cool thing is, as you can see, as I start to move things around here, that these grid lines pop up. Once I've created a board that I have set, I can also, of course, do some other types of editing, bells and whistles with the colors and formatting. Um, I'm not that creative, but once I've got everything set in place, I'm going to go ahead and then click to lock items here, and this will lock everything in place. So that is it for me. Uh, for, our, for Outlook for the web items. Uh, I am now going to go ahead and uh, pass this over uh, to Vanessa, and she will be touching on Outlook for desktop.
Hi, everybody. Um, great to meet you all and happy to see some familiar faces already. Uh, what we're going to learn today is that we're going to learn some organization and productivity tools. Um, we're going to start with organization tools, and the first thing that we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to create folders on your um, desktop application. Um, right here, you're going to be able to see that in my inbox, I have a few folders. Um, those folders basically help me out a lot to stay organized and to know where um, I where I can find um, my precious mail that I know that it would be very important for me. So let's go ahead and start it. So we're going to go ahead and then click on folders right here in the ribbon. We're going to click on new folder. In my case, I'm going to name my folder test. You can name your folder anything you would like. Um, you can create folders for support tickets, for marketing emails, or um, any other important things that you would like. Um, you can choose what that folder will contain. In my case, I'm going to choose mail and post items. I'm going to click here in inbox and I'm going to click OK. So right here, you're going to be able to see that um, it created my my folder. So I'm going to click on my folder. And the other thing that we're going to learn is how to apply rules to this specific folder. So for that, we're going to help. Uh, we're going to go and click home. We're going to click in the middle part um, and it's going to call. Um, it's going to be an icon calling. Um, the name is Booby rules. So we're going to click on manage rules and alerts. It will be the second option. Once you are here, you're going to click on new rule. And here you're going to have the rules wizard. Basically right here, you can create any uh, any role that you will like. In my case, I'm going to create a role that will move a specific email that will contain a specific word in the subject to my new folder that I just created. So I'm going to click on a specific ro uh, words in the step two. I'm going to choose the word that I would like. In my case, it's going to be test. I'm going to add my word and I'm going to click OK. And then the second option would be um, select a condition on what do you want that is specific um, that is specific folder to be. So I already selected um, my word in the subject. I'm going to move that specific um, email to a specific folder. So I'm going to click on a specific here, and then I'm going to click on the folder that I would like to choose. My case is test, so I'm going to click next. And you can also choose a condition. For example, you can choose a condition that once that email is already in that folder, that email can be deleted or that email can be forwarded to somebody else. Uh, for example, you can choose that for your boss that every single email that, that you get there, it forwards to um, that person, or you can create a category, um, for example, as urgent. So I'm going to go ahead and then um, not select anything. I don't want that uh, to have any condition. I just want that email with that specific um, word in the subject to move to my folder. So I'm going to click on finish. And then I'm going to click on OK. Later, we're going to uh, we're going to see how that rule applies. For now, um, what I would like to show you is um, I would like to show you how to clean up your inbox, which is super great um, if you have the option to reduce the emails that you get. Uh, some um, emails that we get are redundant, so that's what we're going to clean up. So right here in home, um, you're going to click on this specific um, icon, which is called clean up. You're able to clean up conversations um, with redundant messages and that you are in a thread. Um, you can clean up the entire folder and you can also clean up folders and subfolders. In my case, I'm going to click on clean up covers, uh, clean up folder. Um, you're going to click clean up folder again. Um, sometimes you're not going to be able to see anything um, super highly visual uh, once you're cleaning up your folder, uh, but it does make the trick. Um, so you will just see that it, it will eliminate some threads or it will eliminate some um, conversations that are redundant for your specific folder or um, inbox uh, folder that you're using. 
So we're going to go ahead and then move on to productivity tools. Um, let's start um, creating a new email. So in my new email, um, I'm going to show you how you can mention um, people. Um, hopefully everybody is able to see my new email. Um, if not, I'm going to try to go ahead and then reshare my screen so you can see it. Perfect. So I think right there you're able to see it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and then start this email. So the first thing that uh, we're going to learn is how to. Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, we can't see your email. We saw it and then it went away. Okay, perfect. Let me just read here again. Sorry about that. Perfect. I think you're going to be able to see my email right now. Yes, thank you. Awesome. So right here, um, let's tag people. And this is perfect when you would like to um, give some people um, some specific things that you would like them to do. Um, so this is perfect um, to mention them in the email and give them some tasks. So in my case, I, I just added Kevin and, and Phil. The way that you do it is super simple. You just go to your email, you, uh, you select the at, and then you choose somebody that you would like to add from your address book. And then you can see that what I did, um, send Kevin and Phil to the two section from my email, which is great. So I don't have to type their emails um, in my email again. So I'm going to click my subject. I'm going to click test and I'm going to call them all day recipes. So um, sometimes um, you're on the go and you will like to um, create an email super fast and quick. Um, so I have the perfect tool for you and it's called dictation. Um, in the message um, tab that you are, um, you're going to be able to see this a specific um, icon called dictate. Right here, if you click on the uh, arrow pointing down, you're going to be able to choose the language that you will like that the dictation happen. In my case, I'm going to choose English. And I'm going to start dictating. Thank you so much, and I cannot wait to see your recipes. Perfect. So that was pretty easy and super fast, and you're able to see that it has really good grammar and everything was perfect. Um, another tool that I would like to show you is sometimes you just want to enhance what you're saying with images. You're able to add something to here. You're able to add drawings, um, shapes, icons, smart art, charts, or pictures to your email. So instead, we were in message tab. Now we're going to move to insert. Right here in the icons, I'm going to click, but you can choose anything that you will like. I'm going to select pie. So I'm going to add a pie and I'm going to add a pizza because I do love pizza. So right here, you're going to be able to see that um, you're able to engage your message that way with images. And you can also see that my email has a pretty bad grammar which is totally okay. We're going to fix that. We're going to click in review and we're going to click on the first option that you see here, which is going to be spelling and grammar. Right here, you're going to be able to see that allows you to have um, like a kind of like a pop up with the suggestions. So I'm going to quickly go and and click change to all of them and it even has punctuation marks to it too. So right here you're going to be able to see that a spelling and grammar check is complete. So this is perfect. It's a perfect message now. The other tool that I would like you to to use once you're on the go and once you want something, um, once you're in the middle of something and you would like to read that message super fast, it's called the read aloud option. Hi team. Very excited for upcoming holidays. I will be making my pumpkin pie recipe and my banana bread recipe. I don't know if you were able to hear what the AI um, was doing, but it was actually reading every single part of my email and it was highlighting every word that it was reading. 
Um, if you if you were able to hear it, great. Um, but if not, then you will be able to see that it was highlighting every word. Um, this um, specific tool I use once I want to read something on the go and I'm very busy and I just want to read that message super fast. You are able to read the message that you are sending and you're also able to read out loud the message that you are receiving too. The last part of my um, my demo, I would like to show you how to translate um, an email. This is perfect for organizations that work with a lot of um, populations around the world. In, in our case, Texas Global Organization. So we do have a lot of staff that um, knows a lot of languages and speak a lot of languages and they're all over the world. So it's often we get messages from organizations um, that their native um, speaking language is not English. So we have to translate those messages. Right here in the review tab that we already are, we're gonna click and translate um, and they are pointing down and you're gonna be able to see that we can translate a message as the entire document or only um, a phrase if you all like to highlight um, that phrase only. You can choose a translation language. In my case, I'm gonna translate from English to Spanish. So right here, um, what is going to happen is you're going to click on translate. We're going to click on the translation of the entire document. You're going to get a pop up saying that it would um, it will show in the web browser rather than in the same message. So we're going to click on yes. And then I'm going to share my screen again. So you're going to be able to see the message on the web browser already translated. Perfect, so this will be the translation um, that we got from our email. Um, I am a Spanish native speaker and this is a pretty good transaction, uh, translation. Um, so it's actually really, really good, um, the system. So we're gonna go ahead and then stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna start um, sharing my Outlook again um, because the last thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna um, we're going to send the email and then you're going to see it in action as we test our role. So I'm going to go ahead and then click send to my email. And you're going to be able to see that um, our role um, was great because we got it here in. We tested our role and it's great. Uh, we have it here in our new folder. Perfect. So with that, um, I'm going to pass um, to Phil that is going to talk a little bit more about insights and calendar. All right. Thank you for that, Vanessa. I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop as well. All right. You see uh, Vanessa's email came over to me as well. OK, first thing I want to show you, you folks here today is something that I think is very underutilized and is called Microsoft Viva Insights in Outlook. It's an artificial intelligence tool that helps you build better work habits, like taking regular breaks and protecting your time on your schedule uh, for focused work, coaching and learning. It's uh, at the end of the day, it's a productivity tool and it helps with productivity and I think mental health. Right, because it forces you to take breaks and with the artificial intelligence, it encourages uh, breaks, uh, being time away from uh, from work as well as even getting up. OK, uh, it uses data captured from your activity in Microsoft 365 and uses it to suggest ways you can manage your email and calendar more effectively. So if you could see my 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 mouse on my cursor. Up here on the right top of the ribbon, you will see something called Viva Insights. It used to be called Insights, and now it's called Viva Insights. And I'll, once I click on that, it'll show you seven insight categories, starting with plan your time away, right? This encourages you to take time away from work, whether there's a short break or, or a week or a holiday. You could put in your start and end date, and it does things for you where it sets up automatic replies. You might want to notify collaborators. You want to resolve meetings before you go to break. Okay, that's one. That's the first one. The second one is want to fo want focus time every day. I encourage this as well, right? Once your calendar is completely booked, 
you don't have time to think, to focus, or actually do work. And this allows you to do that. This helps you, encourage you to do that. With the artificial intelligence, it can tell you what your outstanding tasks are. Apparently, I have one. It's, it's suggesting one task that I need to uh, handle from, um, from this person right here. And then in some cases, you may need to prepare for some meetings. I'll click on this and I'll show you what it looks like. I have a bunch of meetings today, and it tells me uh, what the acceptance rate is, who's invited, and if I want to, if I want to dig in, I'll, it'll show me the location and whatnot, who accepted, who didn't, um, and things like that. Okay, this is meeting prep essentially. And then, um, where am I? And then, follow up on your request. So apparently, I have some requests out there that I sent via email. It tells me that I need to follow up on this request because it's been a certain amount of time. And there's a couple options here. Um, I work with a lot of people. It's six, it looks like I have uh, six people that I work a lot with here, and I can add these people to my important people item. Okay. And there's some there's some things where people sent me documents, and and Outlook is able to process that, and it says, "Hey, Phil, um, you haven't read these yet, so you need to read it and, and probably respond to it." And something very, very important that I actually don't do, and I encourage everybody to do this. I know Kevin does this because he's more regiment, regimented and, and needs those reminders, is that he actually sets an hour a day or so um, every single day to eat lunch. Um, like I said, I do a horrible, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't do this very well, and I need to do this. Um, book time to focus. And the last thing is catch up with your team. Looks like I'm overdue for a meeting with Akshay. And it knows it, so it's actually going to propose some time slots for me as well. OK, quickly, that was Viva Insights. I just want to show you that. There's some other things here as well. If you click on this dashboard, it will open up a web browser um, and it will show you some of your highlights and some of the things you need to do to um, kind of course correct. And like I said, this is more um, behavioral type of artificial intelligence to help you become more productive and, um, and probably to protect your mental health, if you will. So with that, I'm going to take you to some best practices that I use. <clears throat> Excuse me. The best practices that I use for calendaring. OK, the first thing I will for, first of all, this is the uh, for, for those of you who may not know, this is the inbox. This is the email client. Now I'm going to move over to the calendar. Um, I know my calendar looks like a mess and I need to spend more time on focus. I need to set lunch times as well, but that's beside the point. Let's say. Uh, the first, the first best practice I want to show you is called natural language meeting. Let's say I want to set a meeting. Okay, I'll just right click on a space here and go to new appointment. Um, I want to set a meeting. Yeah, I can do the title. Meet in seven weeks. Okay, and then if if I invite with if I meet with other people, I can invite them as well. But one of the smart things that the calendar does is that I don't have to necessarily go in here and look for a time and count the weeks one, two, three, four, five. I don't have to do that. I can just say, I just write in seven weeks and it does it automatically for me. Okay, pretty smart. Huh? And you can adjust the time and, and the date or whatnot. Okay, the another thing I wanna show you is let Outlook do the heavy lifting. Same rules apply. If I want to meet the second week of July, it'll know. It'll be July 10th, 2020. Another cool thing I can do is I can just say Christmas. If I want to, if I want to reserve some time for Christmas, I put in Christmas and 122522. Right, as an example. But it's not all telling because if I put in Thanksgiving, let's see what it comes up with. You must specify a specific date or time. Check your times. And I think what that is is it's because Thanksgiving is a day, not necessarily a date, right? It's it's the it's the Thursday, um, the last Thursday of the month in November. Okay. And then the second feature I want to show you is the date navigator. We'll close this out here. So I'm going to go to the month view. Um, but if I want to look at a specific time or a date, I can drag this left pane here and expand my views. 
right? Now it, it, it'll, it'll, it'll show as many months as the space will allow. Okay, and let's say I want to let's say, let's say I want to look at my calendar for the next two weeks. All I have to do is highlight this for two weeks, and it'll show my calendar for the next two weeks. Okay. Suppose I'm going to Kansas, and Patrick wants to have lunch with me, and he gives me three different time slots. Okay, another thing I could do is just hold down the control button. And let's say he says I'm available on the 2nd, 9th, and 16th of December. What I would do is I would hold down my, my control on the keyboard and I would click December 2nd, December 9th, December 16th. So now it gives, oh, actually, so it has this as well. I, I cannot click that. So what I could do is say, hey, Patrick, on the 2nd, I'm available. On the 9th, I'm not available, and on the 16th, I'm not available as well. Okay, and the last, another thing I want to show you is how to reply to an email thread with a meeting. So, so Kevin sent me this email. Actually, let me use a different email here. Um, let's use this email. Okay, and I want to reply to this email with a meeting. What I can do is go up to the ribbon here and under the home tab, click on reply with meeting and the shortcut is control alt R. So my meeting here is highlighted already. So all I do is click on this and it automatically sets up a meeting for me, right? It, in it includes all uh, the meeting details from the original email down below. And, and what it does is, I didn't have this, but if everybody that's invited to the, everybody that's included in the email, it'll show as required. If you're CC'd on the email, it'll show you as, as optional. And all I have to do here is add a Zoom or a Teams meeting. In this case, I'll add a Teams meeting. And there you have it. It fills out the meeting location, as well as all the contents from the original email. Okay, I'm going to close this out. So that was creating a, a meeting. Okay. What if I want to set an appointment? An appointment is different from a meeting in that there's nobody to invite. It. So all I do is simply take this email, hold down my left mouse, and drag it to the meeting. And here I can set the time and date and location. Okay, and this is just an appointment, so there's nobody to invite. So it could just be some sort of reminder, if you will. Okay, I'm going to close this out as well. I'm going to go back to the calendar to show you um, multiple time zones. I'm going to go back to the week view. So what happens here is that I'm located in San Francisco, the, in the Pacific time zone. But, but I have um, I have a team member who works in Hawaii. So how do I, and he and this team member wants to meet with me at 1 p.m. Hawaii time. So what I can do is right click on this time on this um, on this nav here. If you can see, I'm moving my mouse up at, upside um, up and down. I go to change time zones, and right now the time zone I'm in is San Francisco, right Pacific. It should be a specific time. And then I can label this here. First of all, I take on the, I click on this drop down and I'll go to Hawaii. And I'll label it Hawaii. Okay, and as you can see, it populated right away. I think I said 1 p.m., right? Um, actually, let me change that to 2 p.m. So 2 p.m. Hawaii time would be would be 5 p.m. Um, San Francisco time. And it takes the think out of it. So now you can coordinate your, your calendars accordingly. And you can do this for any time zone out there. I'm gonna take you back to this. I'll right click, change time zone, and you can do it up to, you can have up to the three different time zones. Um, and I'll show you that time zone again, the time zone options. It basically has every single time zone option out there in the world. Okay, Asia, EMEA, uh, Latin America, and the different time zones within the US as well.
All right, another thing I want to show you is how I can just quickly recreate meetings. As you can see here, there is a virtual happy hour that took place yesterday. I wasn't able to make it, so I want to recreate this meeting. Instead of opening it up and getting all the details, what I can do. So an example here is you have a meeting that requires more time. You want the same people, you want the same content, you want the same exact everything. It's just that you have to recreate it. What I can do here is highlight this. As you can see, all I have to do is, um, I think you can see this. If you mouse over it, it'll give you all the details. And what I have to do here is if I, if I want to have this exact same meeting, but today I would just click control, hold control down on the keyboard and just slide it over. All right. And all I did was just move the meeting over. I basically replicated, recreated, if you will. So now I have to go in and actually, um, I didn't create this meeting. What I have to do is actually formalize it by pushing send. Okay. And you don't necessarily have to do this. Um, one by one, you can do it in multiple days if you want. OK, another another best practice I want to show you is what I call um, viewing multiple calendars side by side along my own calendar. Right, so I have some of these calendars here already that I that I have. So I have a, a TechSoup customer success calendar. What I did was I clicked on the calendar view and it shows me a side by side view. Right, so when somebody on my team, uh, when we have customer meetings or we have vacation time, uh, time off requests, uh, then we'll put it into this calendar. I can see it side by side. Um, I'm going to add another calendar here. This is called the US holidays calendar. It's the same thing. It adds it to my calendar view. I can view it as uh, three separate calendars. Or if I want to see one single view with three different calendars, I just click on this left elbow uh, arrow here, and it will consolidate all three calendars into one view. All right. Um, let me see what else. Okay, another thing I want to show you, this is called uh, Visualize Calendar with Colors. Uh, here, I have an example with Friday Yoga. Okay, Friday Yoga is, is um, I don't know about you folks, but when I go to yoga, I'm as stiff as a board. So if I ever want to attend these things, I always like to prepare for it. So I'll actually stretch out before going to yoga, if that makes any sense. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll go to, I highlight the meeting, I'll go to categories. Right, you can pick the predefined categories. You can click on all as well, and I'll call it yellow. Right, in my definition, yellow represents prep time before a meeting. Another thing I could do is create a shortcut. So, Control F2 will toggle between on and off. Right, so I'm going to click OK now, and it'll show on my calendar that it's yellow, and this is a meeting that will that will require prep time and to turn this uh, the category on and off i will click control and f2 at the same time okay i just clicked on, off and i'm going to turn it back on as an example and this is what i call category another thing i want to show you is your change of work hours Here's an example here. Right now I'm on mountain time. It should be on Pacific time, but it changed when I was um, playing around with this. So if I want to change my workday, what I would do is just click anywhere in the calendar in open space and go to calendar options in the drop down. And here I can change my workday. Right now it's set to 7 to 5 p.m., which is a pretty long day. What I want to do here is what I might want to do here is just reduce it to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And what it does is that when other people view your calendars, they will see, you can't really see it here, but it'll actually gray out um, the time that you're not available. So it'll maybe it'll prevent meetings um, that start at 7 a.m. or, or, or 6.30 or 5.30 a.m. Okay, and then something I think is really, really cool is what I call add-ins. I'm gonna go back to my calendar view and up in the ribbons, there's a button here that says get add-ins. 
Okay, and you may, and then it gives you a variety of add-ins. So you may ask, what is a good add-in? So I'm gonna refer, I'm gonna, I like this one here really quick. It's called Find Time. Right here, and I already have it here. So what Find Time does is it allows me, when you have uh, a lot of people with busy times, um, when you have a lot of people busy times, it'll find an open time slot for you. Right, for example, and it has today's date. Nothing's available today, apparently, um, but it'll show me different time slots. And here I can set up a meeting easily without going through everybody's calendars. Um, that's about it for me. I There's one more other thing I want to show you, but I think we're out of time and I want to be respectful of your time. So. And we didn't have a lot of time for Q and A. It looks like we don't have a lot of questions anyway. I I hope you found this session valuable. There's a lot of features to go through. Uh, once again, we recorded the session. We're going to send it out to everyone who attended to who registered along with these slides. Um, Kevin, can you really quickly can you show the can you share the uh, the deck, please? There's a couple things I want to share with you before we go. Yep, doing right now. Thank you. Okay, on a resources page, getting started guide, uh, we'll have these links. Okay, digital skills uh, center, this is where all our courses are. And then our digital transformation forum, come ask your questions here, you will get, they will get answered. The next session we're gonna have is January, January 21, and we're gonna talk about Microsoft Teams. We're gonna take December off, uh, but We'll, we're going to come back with fresh content in, in January. Uh, one more slide, please. And because you attended this session, we want to offer a 50% discount on Microsoft 365 Bootcamp for nonprofits. This is a course that contains um, multiple modules, including Outlook, OneDrive, Planner, and SharePoint. Uh, I've taken a lot of these classes myself, and I found them really, really helpful. Um, use this code right here, 50% off, to get the 50% discount. And uh, we'll we'll send this in a follow up email as well. But um, this is for um, this is a thank you for attending our our, our session here. Um, and that's it. I, I know we're at it. I know we ran a little over, but thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to say happy Thanksgiving and uh, happy holidays. We don't talk to you before uh, January. Um, like I said, we ran out of time for Q and A, but we didn't see a lot of questions fly through anyway. If you have questions, please send us a follow-up email at customer success at techsoup.org. All right, thank you for your attendance and see you in January. Bye all. <laughs>